Hello and welcome back to Property Matters on Dublin South FM and on iProperty Radio with myself, Carol Tallon. You can contact us on social media at iProperty Radio or email hello at iPropertyRadio.com. Joining us this week is Liz O'Kane, Ireland's original buyer's agent and host of the new Virgin Media house hunting show, How to Buy a Home, which airs in March 2023. So just a couple of months away. Liz, you're very welcome. Are you as excited as we are about the new show? I am. I am, Carol. I'm very excited to be back where I'm feeling very comfortable. Thank you very much for that lovely introduction. You might remember that Ireland's original buyer's agent was actually the tagline that you gave me. So you see, I, I, I wouldn't have said that at all, but you're very welcome. And you are, in fact, the Ireland's original house hunter because you were the person, you were certainly the first uh, identifiable TV house hunter back in the early days of Phil and, and Kirsty. Were you, were you around the same time? Oh, God, I was. Yeah, I'm afraid Kirsty gave me my inspiration. That's actually the truth of the matter. Um, yes. I started my first business in 2002, in actually February 2002. And my daughter was born in February 2002. So that will just tell you that I was a complete basket case and decided that starting a business would be a good idea. But look, it's seen me in good stead. I've been very, very lucky. I had a fabulous 10 years. Then we all went wallop and I learned a huge amount from that. And I suppose you could say had to pivot uh, in, a, in, a, in, in a certain way, lost my mojo, lost my confidence, really felt very vulnerable about going back into business again, but sort of dragged myself back and um, reignited the business, um, gosh, maybe four or five years after that, having been employed for a little while within estate agencies and uh, sort of decided that I wasn't a very good employee and I needed to be self-employed again. So you'd know all about that, Carol, wouldn't you? But, I, I'm, and, I'm sure I'm sure in theory I'd make a great employee. I'm just not, haven't had to test it in a couple of decades. But you know, you're exactly. absolutely right when you use the word pivot, because look, we, whenever we talk about uh, longevity within real estate, you know, it, we always return to a point of resilience in the conversation. And that's not just about uh, house prices or it's not just about the property themselves, but the people in it, because it's interesting. Um, you know, I, I you and I have been on this circuit for, you know, decades. But years. Actually, there's there's a lot of familiar faces there. You know, certainly um, people change, brands change, what we're doing and how we do it might change. But there's a lot of familiar faces to to those, you know, that would have been around two decades ago. But what has changed are the buyers. To, and, and this is something that you know an awful lot more about than I do because I'm not in that sphere anymore. So tell me, like, who's buying today? What is a profile? What's the profile of a first time buyer in Ireland at the moment? Oh, my God. Well, that's that's like a pretty incredible question. A profile of a first time buyer could be anybody from 25 to 55. And I'm actually not joking. There's people who are still trying to draw down mortgages in their middle age albeit for a significantly shorter period of time, might be 12, 15 years, but there are still buyers out there who, you know, who still want their first home. And the interesting thing about um, economics and the market and all of that is that, you know this, Carol, as well as I do, look, we're, we're, we're both, we're, we're in the same industry, but sort of coming at it from sl slightly different angles. But the market continues to move in whatever guise the market is presented with. And people still need and want and desire and have the aspiration to own a home, right? Uh, which brings me, if you don't mind, to my career coming 360 back full circle and a lovely opportunity coming my way to present this new series on Virgin Media, which is called How to Buy a Home. And honestly, it's, you know what, there's a bit more meat on the bone with this series, Carol, in that um, it's not Kirsty and Phil, you know, wandering around showing people lovely houses in the hope that they'll present them with one that they want to buy. There's a bit more to this. It's actually about really negotiating the whole process, right? From how do I get a mortgage? Do I go to a mortgage broker? Do I speak to my financial lender, i.e. my bank? Is there other options available to me? What is conveyancing? You know, what is a fixed term interest rate? It's fascinating that, that, that this transaction of purchasing a property is not a transaction that happens too often in anyone's lifetime. It might happen once. It, it, it likely will happen twice. And it might happen three times. 
right? Mm. Um, unless you're a savvy investor who's flipping property or this is your actual business, right? It fascinates me that regardless of the stage you are at in life, how overwhelming and how anxiety ridden the whole process actually is. There is nothing simple about it in this country. And in fact, if I was being brutally honest with you, which I suppose I might as well be, right? Might as well be brutally honest. Our whole conveyancing process and the whole sales process is absolutely broken. It really, really is. It takes an inordinate amount of time. It takes the banks a forever amount of time to release title deeds. Solicitors don't seem to engage in a very fluid manner. And just in terms of my own, and look, that's not every solicitor. I'm not about to bash anybody. That's not what I'm trying to do. I just say to my clients, and I'm not talking about necessarily the clients on, on, on the participants or clients on our show, but I always say to my clients, pull in your core muscles. You'll have a fabulous abs by the time this is over, because this is going to take anything from 16 to 24 weeks before you get under the keys. Like, what the hell is that about? Yeah, but what is that about? 16 to 24 weeks, I would imagine, would be wildly optimistic in the current market because, I mean, you know, years ago when we were writing articles and things like that every week about how to buy a home, we were talking about the procedures. We were outlining things. Today, today it's, it's just so much more challenging in terms of supply. You know, you talk about navigating the process. But actually, our, our, in your experience, are first-time buyers willing to go down the new route to buying homes, as in, um, you know, going to uh, maybe prices, um, are they willing to go to auction? Are they willing to do uh, engage with online bidding? Are they, you know, do they trust the tools and technologies? Because you're absolutely right, our process is broken. And there are so many people trying to fix it through technology, but we're nowhere near there yet. Um, where's the level of trust? For the buyers who come in to you, how much do they trust the not just the professionals within the industry, but the systems, the processes, the new tools and the prop tech that's being engaged? How much do they trust that? I don't know anybody who's using prop tech to bid on property. Very few. Very, very few. Now, my situation, my own personal situation is slightly unique in that there are uh, many agents out there who are using an online, who are using online bidding systems now, as you know. You don't have to use the system. You can still bid by email or verbally. You can still do that. Now, I prefer, personally, I prefer to have a conversation. My business is about relationships. If an estate agent, if Liz O'Kane is on the phone to an estate agent on behalf of the client and that estate agent doesn't react in a positive way, I'm doing something wrong. They should be going, there is Liz O'Kane. She's the buyer's agent out there. She's got a bona fide client. They're solid. She's got sight of proof of funds. React. And, and, and thankfully, due to my reputation in part for the last 20 years, they do react very, very positively. But for me, I still want to pe speak to a person. I want to find out why is the property for sale? Uh, you know, why is the property for sale? Have the vendors found something to purchase? How long are you on the market? Who are you, who, who's bidding on this, if at all? And what's their situation? And the likelihood is that I will ask questions that average Joe on the street, who's not used to a bidding process, will not ask. But I want to know all of that because my job is to, I suppose, el el eliminate bidders where I can, where I can, and to find out who they are, what their situation is, potentially what their ceiling is. Sometimes I can not necessarily find that out, but I can work it out very, very easily. You know, using online bidding doesn't particularly suit me for any particular reason. Uh, I have used it. Yes, I have. And I quite like receiving the emails that say you've been counter offered. But the first thing I do is not counter offer online. I'm going to talk to the agent again. Yeah, I want them to have confidence in me. You know, look, you're bringing it back to where your skills are. The reality is not every first time buyer is as confident. But I mean, look, that's the whole argument for using. But that's, that's, agent. I suppose that's why I'm hired. But yeah, no, absolutely. And look, I, I think for decades, you've very much been maybe the, the secret weapon for many successful buyers in the marketplace. And the, the upcoming show is a great opportunity for people who might ordinarily not have the opportunity to work with you. So actually for the for yeah. the upcoming show for the first season, are there still opportunities? Can you still help buyers? What do you mean? Can I help them purchase? As in, no, as in, are, are all the slots filled or are you still looking for buyers to help? Oh, I beg your pardon. Sorry, I misunderstood you. 
Uh, no, not all the slots are filled. Thank you very much for asking that question, but we're very, very close. We're, we're very close, Carol. Um, we have, there, there's six episodes in this series. It's going out in March 23, and there's two stories per ep. So the program is an, almost an hour long. I think it's 50, 54 minutes or something like that, taking ads into account. So there's two stories. And all the stories are very different. We have first time buyers. We have a couple who've come here from the United States. We have an older couple who are have returned, who are Irish, but have returned from the United States, have never owned a property in Ireland in their lives, are downsizing and now looking for that retirement home. So it's it's very broad and quite diverse. And is there, a, is there a nice geographic spread? Because, um, as you know, I work some of the time in Dublin, but today I'm speaking to you as I'm looking out across to the Aran Islands. So while the, the backdrop might say Dublin, I am in the west of Ireland. I'm in the heart of Connemara. So I should be uh, a glower of Gwilga, but um, I don't do that as often as I should Coop, be. Coop but... Carol. Coop the <laughs> Coop is the right term. <laughs> but I'm trying, Tom McFollum. But, um, yeah. but, you know, I can see up here that the challenges, you know, in Ireland, even though it's a small marketplace, there are still lots of lots of nuances between the different marketplaces. So this morning I was speaking to, um, you know, people about the Limerick market. The Limerick market is quite different to the Galway market, despite it only being an hour away. Um, yeah. And certainly when you come out to the west of Ireland, there's a different profile of buyer. And what's really interesting is that a lot of stereotypes have gone out the window since um, COVID, since remote working opened up opportunities that actually yeah, uh, the I can see it. The local estate agents up and down the west coast of Ireland are struggling to come to terms with the new profile of buyer that they have. But the budgets are possibly double what they were prior to the pandemic, and that's a really interesting dynamic for the market. So, are you dealing with anybody up and down the west coast of Ireland? Desperate to go to the west coast of Ireland. Thank you very much for raising that. We'd love to go. We've we we've actually been to the Midlands. We've been to the southeast. We're actually off to Cork next week and we would love a West of Ireland story. Absolutely. Please put it out there. Connop, we're coming to see you. We'd absolutely love it. Or Munster on the coast would be absolutely lovely. But Galway, Galway being the second, the third city, the third city, the first, second city, the third city, which is I would, I would consider it the third. OK, thank you. So we've clarified Galway, the third city and the beautiful university town. We'd love to help somebody in Galway. We really would. Somebody who is in the market to purchase, who maybe who, who maybe needs some handholding and some advice. Um, you'll get all my advice. You'll get all, I'm a little bit bossy, but I'm okay to deal with because I give good advice. And sometimes we need to change the goalposts a little bit because you will know very quickly whatever it is that somebody is trying to achieve, whether or not it is actually achievable. Then I go and you will get all your research done for you. I will speak to the estate agents on your behalf and I will also negotiate on your behalf as well. But we'd love a West of Ireland story very, very much. And God almighty, wouldn't it be fabulous if somebody wanted to buy something on an island? I'd be in heaven. Well, I'd you love know, that. I have no doubt that that would be the case. I mean, look, I, I think it's a fantastic opportunity for people who, like I said, might not ordinarily be able to avail of your services to actually be able to yeah. get that of you and your team and the research. And on the other side of it, I suppose, what's discouraging for people, and th this is true in every city in Ireland, is there's such a low supply of stock. So, um, you know, you, you have a, a good knack for unearthing properties maybe that are off market that mightn't be available to all buyers. Are we going to see a little bit of that? Um, have we, well, not at the moment, uh, but, but sorry, I'm not going to give you a spoiler alert, actually, I shouldn't, that was the wrong answer, <laughs> not at the moment, but thank you for raising that as well, because I do get wind of properties that are off market, and the phone does ring weekly to say, there's a sale that hasn't proceeded, do you have somebody before we, before we return to the market? Yeah. Sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't, but what I can often get access to is proper is to see a property before it's launched on the market before that so i know about something that i feel will be very suitable for somebody or to match somebody with and sometimes i can get them into that property and a conversation will potentially happen around that occasionally it comes off the market quietly and not everybody wants not every vendor wants to have a marketing campaign it's it's a stressful enough process readying your house for sale and then having potentially two to three open viewings a week and up you go and out you get and, you know, the house has to be spotless. That is also extremely stressful. So sometimes 
there's a deal to be done that's fair and reasonable for everybody. This is not about tucking something under market value to take it off the market. That is not the MO here at all. It is about purchasing something that is at market value, that a vendor is comfortable with and that a purchaser is comfortable with. And sometimes these little secret purchases happen under the radar. And before you know what's happened, somebody's purchased something that you didn't even know about, that you, did, that you didn't even know was for sale. Liz, uh, as that's a, the USP. As a secret, as a secret weapon, you're you're ready to strike again. I love it. Look, this is a great opportunity for buyers, regardless of where they are in Ireland. Yeah. Before we before we close out, how can potential buyers or house hunters get in touch with you about this? So the email address is home at animotv.ie. So it's home. We'd all love a home at a n i m o animotv. Dot IE. We'd love to hear from you. And you know what I'd really love to hear from, Carol? I'd love to hear from some new nationals, people who've been in this country and have already made this country their home and who are contributing to society and who are very, very Irish, but who also have the aspiration, and we are a property obsessed nation, as you well know, who also have the aspiration to purchase a property, maybe just don't quite know how to go about it and would like to come and tell me their story. I would love to help some new Irish people because uh, every, everybody deserves a home, everybody. You know, it's not too much to ask. That's such a gorgeous note to finish on because I genuinely believe this. And I think that was one thing that brought us together decades ago, the shared belief that everybody deserves a home. Um, just the, sh the shape that that might take will change, but everybody yeah. absolutely deserves a home. So Liz, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you uh, back on screen. And so you've heard that call out now from Liz O'Kane and her team. This is a great opportunity to get some research done, maybe unearth uh, a hidden gem that is not has not yet hit the market. Great opportunity. So my thanks to Liz O'Kane, Ireland's original buyer's agent and host of the new Virgin Media show, How to Buy a Home which airs in March 2023, just a couple of months away. We look forward to it. We need to take a quick break. Stay tuned.